my philosophy regarding radiographic progression is we would like to have none. So, so my, my uh, approach is to do the best I can to have patients on ex in, in excellent control so we don't see radiographic progression. Um, it's very nice to help a patient feel better, and we obviously want patients to feel better, have less pain, less inflammation. But I also explain to them that I'm in this for the long run for them, and that uh, if, if a patient feels well, that's one thing, but we all know that there are conditions, including rheumatoid arthritis, where you can feel fine, but the disease is slowly smoldering and getting worse, even though you feel well. And uh, x-ray progression results in joint damage, which in turn results in disability. And I've always said that I'm not a physician who wants to disable patients. I want to enable patients. And so my, my philosophy is such that uh, if we can prevent damage to joints, that they can remain fully functional and enjoy life and remain independent. Uh, the Vector D, I think, provides a nice bridge to show us that if truly a Vector D score is low, then we can rely on our clinical acumen and just assume that a patient's disease activity is well controlled and their risk is, is reduced as well. But in those cases where um, it's high, we may in fact follow radiographs more closely and or even utilize more advanced imaging to really show if there's any damage in, and or ongoing disease activity uh, structurally in the joint itself. In, in terms of the vector, I do use it in assessing for possible risk of radiographic progression. Um, so if I have a patient who has a low vector score, those are people that I am less likely to worry about radiographic progression and may not even x-ray as consistently as I might someone has a moderate or high score. If I identify someone who has a high score, they're actually someone I'm going to make sure I'm treating as aggressively as possible and also x-raying more consistently because people with, say, a vector score over 60, they have a 30% chance at least of developing radiographic regression. That's one out of three. Those people are at pretty high risk. They're somebody I'm going to watch more closely.